you know, and even if you don't exercise and you don't even have a gym membership, go for a walk, go and do some sort of exercise, get some blood flow. It's one of the best things I think you can do during exam season. Get in your exercise and just feel good overall. I promise you it'll, it'll, it'll pay dividends. Hi everyone and welcome back to Pivot Talk with me, Alex. There's no guest for today's episode, so I thought I would take this opportunity to talk a bit about exam season. And I wanted to specifically focus on how to manage stress during exam season, because I know people have deadlines coming up, exams are approaching, and I think we're at a really good time now where we're coming to the end of teaching and exam season starts. And I want to just say as a note before I get into the the episode itself that uh, what I'm focusing on today is is relevant for GCSE students, for A-level students, and also for uni-level students. I personally, I'm a third year business student, so the stakes are high for me at this at this point of the year. You know, I graduate in a few in a, in a few months. And I need to make sure that I get my head down and finish well, finish well, I guess, and don't and don't fail. So there are a few things really that come under sort of exam season. Um, you know, it's 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 almost like how do you strike the correct balance? How do you have the correct social life? Should you have one at all? Uh, you know. Should you exercise? Should you go to the gym? And that's supposed to be good for our mental health, right? But, you know, do we have time for that? And generally, how do we manage stress? Because I tend to be someone who gets very, very, very stressed during exam season. And I'm I'm almost certain that a lot of people right now, especially in my position, you know, towards the end of the degree or in in your second year of, of A-levels, you know, it's the stakes are high and stress is also very high. Um, and I don't want to sound too arrogant saying this, but I do feel that in the past, I found myself to be someone who manages stress quite well, especially during exam season. So when I did my A-levels, we'd have two weeks of exams nearly every day. Uh, and, you know, people would really, really stress over that. People would be up until 2 or 3 a.m. revising, revising five minutes before the exam started. And I always found myself to be somebody who just, I was quite relaxed. And I, I it's hard for me to explain what happens, but, you know, I flipped this switch and I just, I, I realized that we're here now. We need to just get on with it and focus on the exams themselves and not procrastinate, not get worked up about what's what's what was yesterday, what's tomorrow. And this is what I see from a lot of people. So, as I said, deadlines are approaching. And I want to just walk through seven steps, seven ways to manage stress. And I want to start off by saying that exercise is probably one of the main things that you can do to physiologically calm your body, to increase blood flow, to just feel better overall, to get those endorphins, to get some release at the end of the day or the beginning of the day. People always used to say to me, how can you train, you know, the night after an exam, which may also be the night before an exam? Like, how can you go to the gym? Like, your priorities are all wrong. And what they would do is stay up until 1, 2 a.m. revising. And I'm like, your brain, it's its nearly impossible on five or six hours sleep for your brain to be able to consolidate all that information that you're trying to learn, you're trying to cram in. You know, this has been drilled into us for years. Don't cram in the night before. It doesn't work. So what I do is I realize that, okay, it's not efficient for me to revise right now. So I want to go to the gym because it makes me feel really, really good. You know, and even if you don't exercise and you don't even have a gym membership, go for a walk, go and do some sort of exercise, get some blood flow. It's one of the best things I think you can do during exam season. Get in your exercise and just feel good overall. I promise you it'll 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 pay dividends. The second is to sleep well. And obviously, when people do stay up and revise late into the night, they usually have exams relatively early the next day. That means they tend to get five or six hours sleep. And I, I personally don't think that's enough. 
you know and if you think about the way sleep works and the fact that REM sleep is the the period towards the end of your sleep which essentially restores yesterday's information it consolidates it it remembers it so if you're doing a lot of revision the night the night before an exam and you only get five hours sleep you're actually cutting off a, a really really high proportion of your REM sleep which is the good sleep your brain really really needs especially during exam season so what you're doing by working later into the night is you know, you, you, you get, you've got diminishing returns really because you're sleeping less. So you get less REM sleep. So all the work you've put in is almost worthless. You're not going to remember any of it. And anyone who has done this will, will, will realize that, you know, you could go through a whole textbook the night before. And it's, it's, it's crazy how little you remember, you know, at the moment of the exam. So make sure you get your sleep, exercise the night before an exam, get correct sleep. The third is to socialize. And as I said, I, I tend to be somebody who's quite relaxed during exam season. And people see this as not prioritizing, firstly, and also that I'm not taking it seriously because they see that I go and I'll socialize with people. I'll go, you know, I'll go out for an hour or two in the evening just to relax and just talk to people. There are a couple of things a couple of reasons rather why I think socializing is so, so important during an exam season. And it's that firstly, you may fall into the trap of thinking that you need to completely isolate yourself, revise, focus. And I know a lot of parents, especially if you're GCSE or A-level, a lot of parents may almost force their children to, to stay in and won't let them talk to anyone, will take their phone away, won't, won't let them out, won't let them go to the gym or anything. The issue here is that you're isolated. So you, you almost lose the big picture. You're like, I'm doing all this work and I don't even get to speak to anyone. And it's like hell. And all you're thinking about is that you could go and speak to you know to your friends and talk about things. That's number one, is that it isolates you. I'm, I'm, I'm an introvert. I love being by myself and working by myself. But, you know, during exam season, you need to be able to speak to other human beings other than your parents. <laughs> um, the second portion of this is that socializing with other people, especially other people who are in your position, other people, other students who are sitting exams and, you know, have coursework deadlines chasing, they're chasing coursework deadlines, is that you get to share feelings. You get to talk about how you feel. And then somebody else will say, oh yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm I, so stressed too. You know, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And you're like, okay, it's not just me. That's almost having a mental breakdown here. And I think that's really, really important you know i had a conversation with one of my mates who was doing the same the same course as me in the same year similar modules so we were almost in the same position and he said you know he you know he had like a mental breakdown and you know and he and he felt like he was just coming to tears like all the time because he was so so stressed and he was like what how am i supposed to succeed in the future if i can't even get through this and I uh, almost in, in symphony and, you know, together with him, I was having these exact same feelings. And I realized that, okay, I'm not just being, I'm not just an emotional wreck. I'm not just a sensitive person who can't control his emotions. You know, other people are feeling this too. And this is why I think socializing is so, so, so important because you get to speak to other people in your position. And by doing that, you get sort of a sense of relief that, we're in this together. If it's on a sinking ship, it's on a sinking ship, but at least you're not alone. And that's really powerful. And show this to your parents if you're doing GCSEs or A-levels and maybe they can emphasize, uh, sorry, uh, empathize some more with you uh, and let you go and speak to your friends after, after an exam. Number four is, and this is quite controversial, but hear me out, is don't revise forever. And by that, I mean, don't spend so many hours revising there's a couple of things here too. And the first one is that if you spend so much time revising, what you're doing is essentially learning stuff. And it's almost like quantity over quality. 
You know, if you start six weeks early and you revise, you know, page by page, you go through all of your lectures and lessons, you go through your notes, you practice, you're just learning and learning and learning the content. What I think happens there is that you just, you you know, you're a perfect pirate. You know, you can regurgitate information easily. You know, it's like copy and paste. If you look at the big picture in life, I'm talking now, I'm not just talking about exams. I'm talking about beyond and the skills that this revision and this exam will teach you is that what you really want to learn is what skills are you expected to deploy during the exam? You know, critical thinking, analysis, evaluation, writing skills. So what you want to do is you want to learn the content, the, the you know the, the structure of the content, but you want to be able to spend time being able to evaluate this content and really work on you know what does it mean. So spend less time learning multiple different pieces of information and everything down to the last word, and rather maybe do some research online yourself, see what it means. And I think this relates more to GCSE and A-level students. Obviously, uni students, university students are expected to do this. Or maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just the way that I've always worked. I think if I leave more time to revise, and I revise a lot, it's like I've got, I'm just learning lots and lots of content. But whereas if I cut down the time that I've got to revise, it's like, okay, well, I can only do, you know, two weeks of revision for this exam. It means I'm really, really efficient. So I'm learning something and I'm finding a way to connect everything so that it's it's more impactful, it's more significant. What I'm learning has more weight in terms of the words that I've learned, as opposed to just reading a textbook and trying to memorize every single word, you know, the night before an exam. So just bear that in mind. The other reason why you shouldn't revise forever is because, well, it links to all the other points, right? You know, don't go home the night after an exam and do six to eight hours of revision. You know, if you haven't revised, you know, that is that cliche saying, if you don't know the content the night before the exam, you won't be able to. And that's true to an extent, because as I said, if you're not, if you're trying to learn everything the night before, your, your brain can't process all of that information at once. But, you know, you, you want to be able to, to socialize for an hour, to relax, to unwind, to reflect on your performance that day, to go to the gym and exercise, to make yourself some healthy food, you know, power up for, you know, for, for a good sleep and for a good exam the next day. This is, you know, this is way, way, way more important. I promise you this is so much more important than whether you did seven or eight hours revision. And by the way, just something that's come to me is don't listen to what other people say about their revision. If they say they've done 12 hours of revision, you know, don't don't worry, because most people are lie. Most people will lie. You know, if they say they've done no revision, they've probably done six hours. They say they've done 20 hours. They probably haven't. Everyone's insecure about things. People say they do no revision because it makes them feel better if they do bad in the exam. And people say they do loads of revision so that they feel like they're not going to feel anxiety if somebody else says they've done revision for like three days straight. You know, everyone just wants to keep up with their peers and don't listen to what other people say about their revision. Just focus on you because it's you at the end of the day that's get the grade, that will get the next step in your educational uh, life or career, whatever you're at. Number five is eat well. Yeah, you know, I see, and I'm well, well, most of these points in my head, I'm seeing myself at A level because that was the last time I had proper exams. Well, I suppose I did in my first year of uni, but since then we've had COVID and things have been open book and, uh, and you know, 24 hour open book exams. And I'll, I'll come on to talk about how to, to sort of navigate them shortly. But firstly, what I saw back, you know, a couple of years ago was people would just, they would go to like a chip shop after that exam and they would just eat some greasy food and they're already exhausted mentally because they they've just been completely battered by this three hour exam, and now they're fooling themselves with food which just gives absolutely no cognitive benefit, no physical benefit, you know. And and then they'll go home, play some Xbox, and then they'll try and revise at eight pm. And that's what people said they used to do. You know, I, I would do these sort of surveys because I'm trying to find out what people do, 
and it's, it's it, it was it didn't doesn't really work though does it i mean it doesn't take i mean it only takes common sense to see that so you, it's important to eat well especially during exam season and i think this is something that i'm moderately qualified to to give advice on so if anyone is struggling to know what sort of nutrition they should follow especially in times like this with regards to you know how to perform in the gym how to feel energized how to not fall asleep during an exam or while you're revising i can help with that just you know reach out to me on instagram at alex not zero and i can help with that definitely so number six this is the main point that i'm trying to drive home and that is don't take everything too seriously i mean you know i see tears i see people literally having panic attacks and it's it's empathy that i have not judgment but I see a lot of people taking things too seriously. You know, they've got deadlines coming up and they're like, I won't even come for a coffee for 10 minutes because if I do that, I'm losing 10 minutes of my ability to make sure that all my full stops are in the right place. And people, people, again, it, it goes back to not seeing the big picture. What do you really need from a university? Do you need a first? Or do you want your, do you need your work to be published? Or do you need to be mentally secure, have a good group of people around you to help you, you know, excel in life and have a network, professional and social, that is going to get you to the next level, whether you have a first or a two one. And if you're doing your A levels, what matters more to you? You know, your your physical health, your mental health, or the fact that you had one extra quote that you memorized. See the big picture. What really matters here and what is the most important? And yes, I know that you have to periodize in terms of the weight that you give to different tasks in your life at different periods. And obviously exam season, a much larger weight that has to be given to the revision for those exams. You know, you can't go on a two-week holiday during exam season because you you need a mental break. You're going to have to have that after exam season because you don't get that time back. My point is, don't get worked up about everything. Like, seriously, don't take everything so seriously. Just chill out, enjoy life, because that's what it's for, and work hard, and you'll be fine. So the last one, which is kind of a no-brainer, is reduce time on social media. I am I am a master procrastinator. I can sit there when I'm supposed to be revising, and I can watch you know reels on Instagram. I can watch TikToks. I can say that I'm doing market research for the podcast and I can be looking up, you know, videos on Instagram when really all I'm doing is avoiding the task that I need to be doing, which is revising or doing my essay, you know. And what's funny is that as I'm recording this, I'm actually supposed to be writing a CSR essay. Um, but I thought, oh, why don't I do a podcast episode? Because that's, you know, more important than than my CSR essay, and arguably it is, but you know, I need to do that before the deadline either way. Uh, but I think if I if I spent less time on social media during exam season, I think I would still get the benefit of using social media and relaxing and you know have sort of optimum performance in my exams and my assignments. I think the main point here is that block yourself from using social media at certain points. Obviously, when you're sat there with a textbook in front of you and you're revising, you're not going to want to be scrolling through Instagram because, gosh, I can't remember what the actual statistic is. But I think if you're distracted for a distraction of a few seconds can can lead to you needing... 20 minutes or something uh, to be able to get back to that level of focus that you were in before that destruction. And if you just re- remove social media, remove, you know, everything like that while you're in that period you're revising, I think you can maximize that period. And that's another thing, right? I would see people spend six hours revising when they could have done that all in two. You know, as I said, you've got to be efficient, maximum output, minimum effort. 
I mean, that's not lazy. That's just efficient and it's productive. You don't want to be sat there revising for 10 hours and all you've done is read the same page over and over again because you keep going to your phone every time somebody texts you. So just bear that in mind. I mean, these are all basic things and you've heard them all before, but I just thought this was a good time in the year to really drive this message home for myself, um, for my my colleagues at uh, you know at King's Business School and also anyone who's doing exams at the moment, GCSE, A-level, any, any other form of exam, especially if you have multiple exams, because there's a whole period where you're, you're just fatigued and you just want to break. And I think if you can maximize these seven areas, I think you'll find that it's actually okay, you know, exam season, and you might, you might actually enjoy it. Who knows? So I'm going to leave that there so you don't have to listen to my mundane voice anymore. But uh, yeah, thank you all for listening. Have a successful exam season. Hopefully everything goes well and uh, I'll see you all next time.